This is the Ironheart Ultra Heavy Flannel. It's 12 ounces and it's $360. And this is the Goodfellow & Co. Flannel from Target. It is an unknown weight and it is $35. And this is the Filson Vintage Flannel coming in at 8.1 ounces. Currently about $120 on sale but you would pay about $160 full retail price. We'll get into this shirt, which is kind of a middle ground between the very rare and exclusive Ironheart flannel made in Japan and the bottom of the barrel Target flannel, which you can get at any local Target. In this video, we're gonna just be looking closely at each of these shirts, in particular, highlighting the construction and the use of materials in each of the shirts, but also, and this is the part that uh, some of these shirts have and others don't, the story behind these shirts, because in many ways, like what you're really paying for isn't just more information about like where the material's from or how it's constructed, but the actual people that are behind making these different pieces of apparel. What we've got here is Ironheart's Ultra Heavy Flannel. This is a 12 ounce cotton flannel made of Aspero cotton, which is a cotton from Peru that is a tree cotton, which means that it can't be farmed. So it's a rarer, more natural cotton. And of course, in this shirt, we have a Western cut. So we've got these Western yokes on the front and back, Western style pockets. We've got snaps here. These are Permix snaps, which is a, a sturdy plastic engraved with the Ironheart Works Incorporated branding. Uh, this is considered by many aficionados of flannel as the top dog in the world of flannel. And it is uh, for many reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, obviously, as you can see, the tartan pattern itself in this example is absolutely vibrant. Just tons of beautiful color, uh, excellent uh, crispness and attention to detail. It has an incredibly consistent and beautiful weave. Uh, it's almost like a twill on the outside. Uh, it is double brushed on the inside and so it has this incredibly soft feel. And you can see here that it's got uh, lots of additional uh, beautiful stitching here. You can see this excellent stitching here. Uh, and we've got these Permex YKK snaps. The reason for the cost is not only the high level of detail in the construction and the uh, very um, rare use of materials, but also because this is made in Japan. And what, of course, has happened in Japan is this amazing textile renaissance where um, a lot of the uh, old ways of making clothing were um, literally purchased by Japanese makers uh, who bought the um, looms and mills that were no longer of service when a lot of the great American brands went uh, global in their uh, manufacturing. And so what we have in this uh, flannel is not necessarily a, a true vintage construction. This isn't like a replica of an old shirt, but just uh, a use of materials and a, and a level of attention to detail that doesn't exist on the mass market anymore. Uh, and you can tell uh, when you're looking at, uh, for example, the uh, the crispness of the Western style yoke on the front and back of the shirt, where, where the sharpness of the pockets, how, how beautiful everything lines up, that we are looking at a shirt that has been given exceptional attention to detail. But you can really get a good look at the quality of the construction of the shirt when you take a look on, uh, when you take a look at the shirt on the inside. Let's talk about Ironheart Works Incorporated. This again was a brand founded in 2002 by Sunichi Hiraki in Japan. This man was an enthusiast for motorcycling and also high quality heavyweight clothing. And so Ironheart's most famous for their ultra heavyweight denims, but the ultra heavyweight flannels have taken on a life of their own as well. And you can see here, if you get down here and take a look at, for example, this Western this uh, little uh, Western pocket here, uh, double Western pocket, uh, just the level of detail that you can get in this button. Incredibly beautiful Ironheart Works Incorporated button. And when you unfold the button, you can just see the high quality level of stitching even on the inside of a pocket like this. Now it's important to note that this cotton shirt is not selvage. Uh, isn't the objective with this shirt is to make a selvage 
cotton material. What it is instead is just a double brush cotton. And so obviously this fabric would have needed a lot of detail to get the double texturing, uh, the more rugged and uh, coarse and dense. It's not really uh, unpleasant to the touch, but it certainly isn't ultra soft like this inside brush interior. A brush interior like this, of course, is gonna create more loft. It's gonna be more comfortable to wear and it's gonna be warmer. As you can see here, we've got some beautiful chain stitching here along here, and this seam in particular is um, a good example of uh, really going over the top. This stitching is uh, a felled internal seam, which is what you would see in a pair of jeans normally. And so there's just a, a level of construction that is going above and beyond in this shirt. You'll also notice that this is an extra, extra large shirt. Uh, I am a size 42 in a blazer and typically a large in most American apparel. And so this is an example of really having a, an opportunity uh, when I was working with Iron Shop Provisions to uh, talk with them about sizing. And they have an excellent size guys on their website so that I was able to ensure that, that this shirt was actually going to be able to fit. If you are looking at investing in any uh, Japanese apparel in general, I strongly advise you to make sure that you talk to someone who has some subject matter expertise on the construction of the shirts and the sizing because this Western style cut, which is a slimmer cut as you saw, uh, really is only fitting me in an XXL, which is very unusual. So as you can see, this is a Western style yoke, which uh, beautifully comes together on the back. And you'll also notice, uh, maybe reminiscent of, of uh, uh, traditional heritage boots, if you're a Red Wing fan, that this is triple stitching. Again, this is just a level of detail in construction uh, that you can see on the inside is still also very clean. That's going to really ensure that uh, this shirt holds up exceptionally well. An example of the extra level of detail made on these shirts is evident in the fact that they have a choice of a button instead of the snaps on the very top button. And the reason is quite simple, uh, because your beard won't get caught in this in the way that it might in a snap. Let's get some disclosures out of the way. First of all, I received this shirt from Iron Shop Provisions, which is a shop that I heartily recommend. They're a small private business owned out of Louisiana. And the founder of Iron Shop Provisions was himself a welder and a metal worker before he uh, also went into the retail world. And I had an amazing conversation with Josh on the phone. And basically, he told me that as a welder, he was looking for clothing that would be able to hold up with the trade that he's in. And uh, that's something that I, I definitely uh, respect and appreciate when you're committed to a trade and you need equipment that's going to hold up to the work that you're doing. So this flannel was sent to me for review, but I didn't receive any payment. I wasn't asked to say anything specifically, and they are not asking to see the video in advance. I just received this in exchange for a review. Now, one thing that we always have to talk about when we're talking about premium apparel, as we certainly are with Ironheart, is the cost of entry. This shirt, if you were to just pay full retail right now, would be $360. And unless you're an early watcher of Triple Five Gear, and you happen to actually be watching this on Black Friday, because this shirt is being offered at 15% off, which comes in at $306 if you were to get it from Iron Shop Provisions today. Goodfellow & Co. is a sub-brand of Target stores that attempted to introduce higher level fashion into Target's clothing line, kind of taking cues from traditional styles and making them very affordable. Now that in itself is great, especially if this is your first foray into more traditional clothing, if this is the first flannel you're ever going to buy or something like that. Uh, this is uh, offering a lot of value. My guess on the weight, which of course I don't have a way to ascertain, is that this is around 10 ounces. I don't think that it's as heavy as the Ironheart flannel, but it's definitely heavier than the Filson Vintage flannel that I also feature in this video. And the way that it uh, fits me is uh, like a pair of pajamas, as my son Leo observed, who's helping me film this video. Uh, very wide cut, very boxy, um, and um, doesn't feel uh, very fitted, frankly. Um, as you can see, this is heavily brushed, and you do have some nice patterns in here. Uh, went with this blue just so that you could kind of see the level of detail. 
basically compared side by side with the Ironheart, this feels very low res. It does have pockets, which I absolutely hate. Uh, these are polyester pockets here. And uh, as you can see from the inside of the construction of these pockets, that uh, these are going to tear at some point. And when they tear, you're going to have gaping holes inside of your shirt. Uh, you'll probably just need to cut these out. This is a horrible decision uh, from uh, a construction standpoint to include these pockets, uh, even though it's a quote-unquote added feature. Um, it's uh, by far the worst part of the shirt, uh, aside from maybe the fit. Um, best parts of the shirt, though, are just the weight. It's definitely a warm shirt. It's clearly uh, heavily brushed cotton fabric. This shirt is made in Bangladesh, which, of course, uh, is uh, similar in uh, the kind of mystery meat construction that you get with the Filson, where you're not going to know as much about where the cotton is from or uh, what uh, other additional details go into the construction here. All right, so I'm just getting this shirt on to review it and look at this the threading in the buttonhole was catching on the button that's pretty annoying you'd have to cut that and trim that and that's gonna of course um, cause fraying in the long run so the question is, is do I think this is a bad shirt uh, yeah I do <laughs> sorry I, I do think this is a bad shirt the pockets are the deal breaker for me in fact uh, I, I wouldn't recommend this shirt to people uh, unless you were willing to be creative and do some like, you know, Van Nystad type of modifications of the shirt to maybe stitch the pockets closed or create some canvas pockets that actually have a little depth. These pockets are so shallow you wouldn't be able to put your phone or your wallet in there and um, you would definitely lose it. Also, I don't really like the fit of this shirt at all. I think that um, it's... Um, which is not very flattering. And uh, well, it certainly would allow for something like layering, uh, it um, doesn't really invite itself to be an outer layer. It's so soft and brushed that uh, I have a feeling that uh, this cotton is going to wear a little bit more quickly than uh, the Ironheart or the Filson. Uh, the large buttons here aren't bad, but as I point out, the buttonholes have a variety of construction flaws here. And as you can see, you can really pull on these buttons and get a lot of um, a lot of the threading out for the button. So I would be afraid to lose these. Um, it doesn't come with any extra buttons either, which is a concern. Uh, the Filson, of course, has an extra button. And uh, the snap buttons on the Ironheart are snaps. Oddly enough, I think the biggest diminishing returns are with this shirt. I would much rather uh, save my money and buy one quality shirt from Filson or Ironheart than buy a few of these shirts off the rack. This is a fan favorite. It's uh, prior to making this video, I would have said this was probably my favorite flannel. This is the Filson Vintage Flannel. And uh, this is uh, Filson's heaviest weight cotton flannel. Of course, if you want to get into wool, there's uh, a whole nother world of wool flannels out there, but we're focusing on cotton shirts here. And uh, this flannel has a beautiful sort of tweed pattern on it. Uh, 8.1 ounces, so obviously it's about 35% lighter than the Ironheart flannel, but it still feels like quite a heavy flannel. Uh, as you can see here, the cotton itself is uh, quite brush itself. I have worn this shirt quite a bit. Now this shirt does have some of the attention to detail that you would appreciate on a higher level construction shirt. First of all, it does have double shoulder pleats on the back. Um, that uh, shoulder pleats is going to give you a little bit better range of motion. Uh, it does have melamine, which is just a nice plastic button here, wide, uh, flat, comfortable, broken in button, no hot spots whatsoever. And uh, in general, the kind of tweedy feel of the shirt is something that I definitely enjoy. Uh, it also has a number of nice construction elements uh, like um, a double needle construction and flat felt seams. And so you can see here that there's, there's definitely some nicer construction elements in the shirt, but you also have things like occasional loose um, threads. Uh, this shirt is made in India, and I think that that's frankly embarrassing for Filson. As a great American brand, they should bring the shirt back and manufacture it in the United States. Uh, the price increase would be justified, in my opinion, even if the shirt was identical. 
but uh, given that it's made in India, you're, you are going to have uh, varying levels of quality control in a shirt, even when it's coming from a great brand like Filson. That being said, it doesn't take away from how great this flannel is. This is a size large and the large fits me well. It definitely isn't as fitted as a Western cut shirt, but I, I still like the fit. Uh, sleeve length is good and overall it's been a very comfortable shirt to wear. Uh, I definitely think that this uh, weight, about 8.1 ounces again, as I mentioned, uh, gives the shirt plenty of life. There's an unlikely chance that you're going to have any wear through anywhere in the shirt anytime soon. Overall, I do think this is a major step up compared to the type of shirt that you would be getting from a big box store. All right, Triple Fibers, I really enjoyed sharing all of these different flannels with you today and telling a little bit about the differences. For me, the ultimate story uh, of these different flannels is... How much are you willing to invest in individuals who are invested in their craft and how much are you interested in getting all the details of the construction and materials that go into effectively making these different levels of quality of shirts. If you just need a shirt on your back then you don't need to worry about these little details. However, if you do care about where things are produced or how they're produced or how long they're going to last, these are the sort of things that go into investing in a higher level quality of shirts. But I would love to hear from you as well about what you think the ultimate value of these shirts are. And please do let me know in the comments below. If you made it this far, please give me a thumbs up. And I really appreciate you tuning in to Triple Five here.